Coming up next on Amsoil Championship Off-Road, the world's greatest short course racers travel to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan for an epic test on a massive, tough track. In Pro 2, Keegan Kincaid and Jarrett Brooks are pushing hard, putting on a show as they close the points gap in the championship chase. Who will come out on top today? Pro racer Scotty Lawrence has battled adversity from all angles all season. But at least in the pits, his racing family always has his back. In Pro 4, is a title shot on the horizon for CJ Greaves? Not if this man has a say. Defending champ Kyle LeDuc is ready for a showdown in the UP. The big dogs are ready to roar from Bark River. Rounds 9 and 10 of Amsoil Championship Off-Road starts right now. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and Park River International Raceway. For close to half a century, this massive track has hosted world-class short course racing. The points battles are what we're here to see. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Brent. In Pro 4, it's the battle that we've all wanted to see. CJ Greaves leads Kyle LeDuc by only five points. But then in Pro 2, the top five drivers are all in contention with only three rounds to go. That's Ryan Beat, Jarrett Brooks, Corey Winner, Keegan Kincaid, Trevor Layton, they all have a shot at this thing. For more information and more on our track this afternoon, let's go down to the third member of our team, Haley Shanley. Thanks, Brent and Shane. I'm standing down here in Cemetery Turn, very technical section of the track. Well, why is that? Upon entering this section, you are going on one of the steepest inclines you'll see on the entire circuit. Not only that, but you're going into it completely blind into a corner. Upon going down that hill, that has you into Cemetery Turn big sweeping corner. Now this track we do see a mix of big sweeping corners and tight technical ones. Now again one of the fastest tracks but make no mistake super easy to overdrive this track. Why is that? In part due to the dirt that we're working with. It is a beautiful sand clay mixture that's going to dry off go to dry slick. We're also going to see that blue groove come into play. That's when the rubber on the tire starts to wear off onto the dirt making it difficult to find traction. Now the weather conditions we're dealing with this weekend absolutely beautiful nice breeze, complete sunshine, that's going to help dry this track out. So the track crew here, they're seasoned experts. They've been doing this for 45 years, but they're going to have their work cut out for them. Next up, Pro 2. Who are we here to look for, Shane? One driver I'll want to watch is that number three truck, Daly Penico. He qualified very well for this event at Bark River International Raceway. Another driver to watch will be the number 31, Trevor Layton. He picked up his first career win in Pro 2 this year, and I look for him to make some more noise this season. Well, the green flag's about to fly, ladies and gentlemen. Get on your feet. The best Pro 2 drivers in the world are here at Bark River. Let's see if they get through turn one clean. Daly Pennick on that Humblecock truck. Number three got a great jump off the start. He'll lead the field down through turn one. He's got Trevor Layton, though, hot on his heels. Yeah, Trevor Layton not letting him go anywhere. There's Kevin Hanegraaff. There's Jared Brooks making some contact with Corey Winter. And here comes round nine winner Keegan Kincaid on the inside. Brooks trying to find his way to the front. That number 77 general tire truck. Everybody slicing and dicing as they head up and over the hill past the crowd for the first time and down towards Cemetery Turn. Yeah, Jared Brooks, he's a man on the move right now in the 77. He's going to the bottom side in the cemetery turn. He found some dry dirt right in the middle of the two lanes, trying to take advantage of it. That's Trevor Layton. We're going to have him on the podcast coming up. A very well put together race car driver. And you notice there's no sponsors on the door. He's still looking for a big ride. Yeah, Layton picked up a win earlier this year at ERX Motor Park back in round six. His first Pro 2 win. He's a former snowcross racer. And now he's really feeling the heat from Brooks. 
Brooks is alongside down to the inside. He forced Layton outside in that right hand sweeper. And Jarrett Brooks now up into second place. Oh, Pettico goes around. He's going to give the lead over to Jarrett Brooks. Pettico comes back on the track in fourth and makes contact with winner. Pettico just forced his way right back into the race line. So winner had to gather himself back up. But Jarrett Brooks, the number 77 from Alpine, California, your new race leader in Pro 2. And Leighton goes Layton, around. He collects Pettico and collects a host of others. Tough, tough break. Ricky G in the mix. Four. Trevor Leighton, Kiki Kincaid. My goodness, tough break for all those drivers. As we look back out front, Jarrett Brooks now stretching his lead over the rest of this field. Ricky G, he's got his hands full right now with Keegan Kincaid, who was the round nine winner here in Pro 2. Kincaid is in the thick of the championship hunt here in Pro 2. Kincaid, that Lucas Oil back number four, trying to hunt down Ricky G in that 78. Ricky G goes a little wide. Keegan having some issues negotiating that first turn. He'll have to go back to work and try to put a run on Ricky G. He's 18 years old. Him and Keegan both have wins this year in the Champ Off-Road Series. So these guys, that just shows you how much competition's out here. Well, now Ricky G stretching it back out over Keegan Kincaid. Still a green flag racing here in Pro 2. As we go back on with Corey Winner trying to hunt down our race leader right now, Jared Brooks. And we should be coming to that mandatory competition caution this next time by there's Winter in the Fabtech truck, still holding on. He's gonna love this mandatory competition caution. But Jared Brooks, he has a different eye of that. He, he wishes it would just stay green. There it is, we've reached halfway in Pro 2. Part one is in the books. Jared Brooks, your leader at halfway. Corey Winter second. Keegan Kincaid third. Ricky G will cross the line fourth. And it'll be Zach Zakowski rounding out the top five at halfway. And now we'll go down for a trackside report from Haley Shanley. Guys, I really like what we're seeing from the number 67 of Corey Winter as of recent, who, as you mentioned, has a side set on that first career pro to win with Jarrett Brooks right out front. Let's talk about that rivalry between him and Keegan Kincaid. That rivalry, it has been burning all season long. That really ignited in the opening rounds at Anago. These guys are racing hard, man, as you had seen in the preceding round, round nine. I was catching up with Steve Downing, who works on the number four truck of Keegan Kincaid, and I asked him, what's your response to this duel? And he said, we're just confident. Here on the last leg of the season, we're not only in the big tracks that they feel the truck is really tailor fit to, but also the home tracks, of course, local to Crandon, Wisconsin. This is also very close, just in his backyard, if you will. He said this year has been a big challenge for them. They've really stepped their game up, but everyone has. That's why this season has been so unpredictable for these pro twos, but the only thing predictable about this season Season is that they are certainly going to put on a show. That's coming from, again, Steve Downing, who works on the number four truck, Keegan Kincaid. Well, we'll see if Keegan Kincaid can try something as well as Corey Winter. Keegan tries, he had to get on the binders. Here comes Ricky G to the inside. Ricky G down to the bottom in turn one. He's going to seal the deal there on Kincaid. Winter got crossed up as well, over rotated. That's gonna open the door for Gutierrez to try to move up one more spot. Well, look at Keegan Kincaid, he took a different line. He made it to the inside. Great driving by both of them, getting out of the throttle, not taking each other out as we're gonna go back in the back section here at Bark River. Look at this one by Zakowski. Yeah, Zakowski with a great run, trying to mix it up with some of these established Pro 2 drivers. Zakowski is a rookie in Pro 2 this year. Yeah, you gotta remember. Whoa. Kincaid and Gutierrez made door-to-door -door contact in the air, coming into cemetery turn. Back up front, winner still trying to reel in Jared Brooks. But it looks like that gap starting to widen just a little bit. Oh man, a lot of action going on here in Pro 2. Corey Winter still trying to hunt down Jared Brooks. Brooks in round nine, finished second, runner up to Keegan Kincaid. He's looking to reset that field today and take a win going into the fall, Crandon. Well, Brent, my eyes are telling me right now that Kincaid running in third in that Lucas Oil number four truck is a little bit faster, or he was, but look, Kincaid has a flat right rear tire. Oh, man, tough break for Keegan Kincaid. Here comes Mickey Thomas now trying to move 
Ricky G over as there's Kincaid to the right side of your screen. He's well off the pace. Ricky G almost got crossed up over that blind corner. Able to gather it back up, but he had to scrub some speed to do so. That's gonna let Thomas get around. Wow, Time Bob. running out here in Pro 2. And yeah. we will see the white flag the next time our leader comes past the stripe. Gutierrez again crossed up, just searching for any kind of traction. Yeah, Jared Brooks with a pretty decent lead over Corey Winter. Here's the battle on the track right now. See if Bobby Brand can make some moves here in the 43. Brand Construction Pro 2. Coming through the gravel pit one more time. In the general tires number 77, Bill Stein shocks on board as well. Trying to redeem himself from round nine as he's coming off that flyway jump again. Yeah, Brooks was pretty vocal about how frustrated he was yesterday with the third place finish. He thought he had a truck that could have won the race, but couldn't put it all together. But he's putting it together here in round 10. A couple corners to go, we'll have a local yellow flag. Daily Pinnacle flipped over on the previous lap, and you see that number three truck sitting off to the side there. Yeah, Jared Brooks gonna look at the checkered flag. He's gonna take the win here in round 10. Second to go to the Fabtech 67, a great run for Corey Winter. Yeah, we'll see if a call is made for now. Ricky G is third at the line. Bob Brand with a tremendous run, the best finish of, the, of his career for Bob Brand with a fourth. And we'll meet our winner after a brief timeout. The Amsoil Championship Off-Road on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Amsoil. Amsoil, run with us. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. The best Pro 2 drivers in the world are here in Bark River. Let's see if they get through turn one clean. Daily Pinnacle on that Hummelcock truck. Number three got a great jump off the start. He'll lead the field down through turn one. He's got Trevor Layton, though, hot on his heels. And here comes round nine winner, Keegan Kincaid on the inside. Brooks trying to find his way to the front. That number 77 general tire truck to the long side down to the inside. He forced Layton outside in that right hand sweeper. And Jared Brooks now up into second place. Oh, Pinnacle goes around. He's going to get the lead over to Jared Brooks. Pinnacle comes back on the track and forced and makes gather himself back up and Jared Brooks, the number 77 from Alpine, California, your new race leader in Pro 2 and Lake goes Lake, around. He collects Penico and collects a host of others. Tough, tough break, Ricky G in the mix. The front winner still trying to reel in Jared Brooks. And it looks like that gap starting to widen just a little bit. Yeah, Jared Brooks gonna look at the checkered flag. He's gonna take the win here in round 10. Uh, I really want to thank ATD Charlie, Michael. These guys have been grinding hard on this uh, converter setup transmission. Huge thank you to Tanner and Nick. This is also a new track for us in the Pro 2. So uh, I'm just so pumped to get this uh, first points win in the Pro 2. And it uh, looks like it's going to be an interesting race coming into Crane for the last two points races. So thank you to all the fans. Thank you to Aspen, Roxon, my family coming out from Cali. It's a long trek, but uh, this is worth it. Thank you, guys. Up next, Pro Mod. This class is the baddest of the bad when it comes to side-by-side -side racing. Turbocharged, high speed, high intensity, high stakes, they are fun to watch. One driver to keep an eye on is Rodney Van Epper, and he has strung together a bunch of really good finishes this year. I expect him to push his way to the front. Another driver to watch is that number 28, Gray Ledbetter. She comes all the way from Morganton, North Carolina to race with us, and she is improving quickly this year. Here we go. Green flag flies, that's Andrew Carlson in that 15 on the outside. Yeah, but look at that jump by Scotty Lawrence as he dives down into turn one. Lawrence was on the pole for this one and he's gonna try to stretch his lead early over Carlson, Cheney, and all the rest. Owen Van Eppern got really crossed up entering turn two. Yeah, there's Kyle Cheney in that 91 having an up and down season. See if he can get some luck on his side here at Bark River in round 10. We'll go back up front. There is Andrew Carlson trying to hunt down Scotty Lawrence in that number 26. Yeah, we haven't seen Scotty Lawrence on the podium at all yet this year in Promont side by side. We'll see if he can keep it together here in round 10. You see the push there by Lawrence down in the cemetery turn. Yeah, these top two can't waste any time. Kyle Cheney's really putting on the hammer 
as they're gonna come towards that Cooper Tires flyaway jump. It's gonna be Lawrence Carlson. Watch Carlson gonna really try to set up this turn. Gonna go outside, inside, trying to duck underneath. He's gonna be side by side, can't get it done there. Ton of bounce in the rear end of Lawrence's car. I'm watching the left rear tire on Scotty Lawrence. It's bouncing just out of control like there's a shock issue there on that number 26. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Like you said, Shane, as looks like Lawrence has definitely come off the pace. So you're right. Something's definitely going wrong with our second place competitor as here comes Kyle Cheney in that 91 Can-Am. Andrew Carlson, the number 15 Polaris running out front. Lawrence still holding on for dear life, but these rough sections, you see that car just bucking. It's not landing right, it's not jumping right, so that's gonna be a handful to get around here. Yeah, you definitely don't wanna go too fast with that kind of problem. You'll end up endoing that car, so he's doing the right thing and trying to keep it under control as we go back towards the cemetery turn. Now we'll send it down to Haley Shanley with a trackside report. Let's talk about the number 73, Pablo Jimenez. He joined us for the first time ever this season, his first time in a side-by-side. -side. Zero laps, zero seat time at ERX Motor Park, which is the third stop of our tour. But that was not the start of his racing career. He is actually an X Games adaptive snow bike racer. He's even qualified for winter X Games at ERX Motor Park in the winter time. He said after strapping into the side-by-side -side for the first time, he's ready to sell the snow bikes. He said there is nothing like it. Now here, three races into his side-by-side -side racing career. He said he's starting to get comfortable and find a little bit of speed here in the number 73. So watch for Pablo Jimenez throughout the rest of the season. Andrew Carlson, Kyle Cheney, Robert Luar, your top three. Robots side-by-side -side back underway and headed down into turn one. Well, it looks like Ben Emperor got a good jump on that start. He did, but Cheney pushed him off the race line onto the soft stuff, so. Cheney battles back to hold on to second place, and it's Rodney Van Epper and Loire. And Owen Van Epper, yesterday's winner, back there in fifth in the number five car. Yeah, you can't count out Owen Van Epper, and he's been so fast late in the season. Gonna try to run down his father, and that man right there, Kyle Cheney in the Can M91. Who we talked about earlier, he's had such an up and down season. He caught flame back a couple weeks ago. So good job by his crew to get everything rewired, set up, and back out on track. And he's on the hunt right now for Andrew Carlson. Yeah, Cheney has two dominant wins this year. And then in the other seven races so far, has had absolutely terrible luck. He's struggled a whole lot. Like you said, trying to run down the 15 of Andrew Carlson. Carlson is the current points leader here in Robot Side-by-Side. Yeah, now Cheney's stuck down to the inside. Let's see if he tries to throw a little block move here on Van Epperen, and he does. So Cheney fights back, but he opens the door again for Rodney Van Epperen as they come to the county road corner. Yeah, Van Epperen gonna try just about everything as time is definitely starting to run down here in Pro Mod side by side. There's Kyle Cheney trying to hunt down our race leader, Andrew Carlson. Look at Van Epperen getting one heck of a run off that downside. Coming into the cemetery turn. Kyle Cheney, that number 91 Can-Am, showing a lot of speed, but it doesn't seem like he guessed correctly on tires today. It's, he's having a hard time holding the cushions. He's been drifting too wide in some of these corners. Yeah, you don't want to get out of that race group. Look at Van Emperin. That is one of the farthest jumps I've seen a pro mod do, and he just moved Cheney out of the way. Yeah, that's going to let Owen Van Emperin into the mix as well. Yesterday's winner in round nine. Now Van Eppern again looks to the inside of Cheney. Yeah, Owen Van Eppern, he's hoping that his father and Kyle Cheney make a little contact so he can sneak by both of them. I believe Owen Van Eppern is one of the fastest cars on the track right now, but Carlson's running a 122.977. So if you think about Pro 2, Pro 4, they're running 118s, 119s. They're not far off their final speed. There's Kyle Cheney, he switched it all up. He's going right to the bottom side. He pushes a little wide, but that's gonna set up a nice apex for him on exit. It should pay off here at the end of the straightaway. Let's see if he can get the power down and run down Andrew Carlson. One and a half laps to go here at Bark River International Raceway as they go up and over the Cooper Tires flyaway. 
That time, Cheney just launched over the flyway. He's setting up outside of Carlson, putting the pressure on. He's got the outside run. Wow, look at him. He went the long way around, made that pass stick. Here comes Carlson back. Great driving by both Cromont drivers, not making any contact. That was a terrific calculated pass there by Kyle Cheney. Absolutely sent it on that right-hand sweeper and was able to make it stick. Now Carlson has to go to work to try to fight back on Cheney. The track really starting to blue groove like Shane was saying earlier. You can see how hard packed it becomes. It's almost like an ice rink. But the problem is they don't have any ice skates underneath those wheels. It really is hard to grip these turns. Oh, trouble Cheney. for Kyle oh. Cheney. Speaking of bad luck, Kyle sheared Cheney. Off, sheared off a right rear wheel and another disaster for Kyle Cheney here in 2021. Looked like he had that race in hand. That's going to turn the lead back over to Andrew Carlson in the number 15. That's going to put the two Van Eppern cars in podium spots as well. Here comes Rodney Van Eppern on the charge. Yeah, and here comes Owen Van Eppern. So this is going to get interesting on the final lap. And Carlson just doing what he needs to do in that Polaris. From Elk River, Minnesota, the number 15 Yokohama tires ride. Andrew Carlson will take round 10. Second will go to Rodney Van Eppern. Third will go to Owen Van Eppern. Robert Rally, Millar with yeah, a hard a fought run. fourth and Gray Ledbetter from Morgan to North Carolina. One of the youngest drivers in the field will round out the top five. Hats off to my team for not giving up on me and the car. Uh, you know, we made a decision last night that we're not interested in second. We're not going to go out and do points racing. We're going for the win today. So we were going to put in some safe setup, turn the power down. We wanted to win today. And, uh, you know, I'm super pumped that I got to do that for my team. Here comes Carlson back. A racer who hasn't made many headlines this year has been the number 26 of Scotty Lawrence. Bad timing and hard luck has plagued him thus far this season but support from his racing family and the community have him still going strong. I'm Scotty Lawrence, driver of the number 26 factory Can-Am car in the Pro Mod class, and then I also drive the Pro 4. This year has been very challenging. I've had really bad luck this year. I've had a podium appearance, but uh, overall I haven't been real happy with the season. We're, we're just super pumped to be here every weekend and see what we can do on the track. Don't think Kenton's gonna have enough time. There's the checkered flag. Ava Lawrence takes the win here in round 11. You know, racing with him is pretty cool because he's, he's one of the front runners and stuff. And he's in the, like, the biggest, well-known, fastest class at the track. It just gives you such a good rush of adrenaline and you can't stop once you get out there. It's the best feeling ever. 
Well, it started out at the beginning of the year. Uh, seems like flat tires have been plaguing me all season. Mud race that I thought, man, this race is gonna go great. It was that lean of the last round. I had the pole position. I thought if I could get out front and do good, well, my vision got completely blacked out. I had some uh, mud visor issues. Ended up on the K-rail, stuck. Got off of that, kind of went back and, and did all right. Um, was able to finish the race, but not where we wanted to be for sure. And uh, the next day was having a really good race. I kind of started towards the back of the pack because of the bad race the day before. Worked my way up to the top five or six and then ended up getting tangled up with another guy and that another flat tire ended my day. So um, and we've had a few mechanical issues as well uh, that have been my fault, but I've only been getting the bad luck. So I need some more of that good luck. Well, Can-Am is a great machine for sure. I mean, we've been racing the Can-Ams for four years now. I guess uh, I'm probably a little bit biased because I own a Can-Am dealership in Ohio. It's called Rival Motorsports. Um, we've had a lot of success at the dealership. We've been National Dealer of the Year. And um, you know, we work hard at the dealership and we work hard at the racetrack. Welcome back to Amsoil Championship Off-Road. Up next, Pro Stock Side-by-Side -side Racing. What are you looking to see in Pro Stock, Shane? This championship chase is a duel at this point. It's Brock Hager, CJ Greaves. They're separated by four points. This one is going to come down to the wire this year. Green flag, Pro Stock Side-by-Side -side underway here at Bark River International here in round number 10. Jesse Klaus not wasting any time coming into turn number one. See if all these cars can get through clean, all 22. Here's Adrian Chetty in that blazing orange race driven ride, trying to make his way through the field early. As there's Rosales that you talked about, he had to do a motor swap. Yeah, Rosales trying to work his way up, stay up in the front of the field after starting on the second row. He's already up into third place. You can see a lot of dust out there on the track already in the early going. That's Klaus feeling the heat right now from RJ Lego in the number 91. That's the battle for the lead. Those two started on the front row. The fastest four so far just checking out over the rest of this field. Yeah, there's Klaus, there's Lego. Looks like Brock Hager, I was just gonna say it. It looks like he was coming to the bottom side, making two passes in one turn. Now he's gonna take the lead as they crest the Cooper Tires flyaway jump. Man, if you're CJ Greaves, you better put the loud pedal down because Hager is always out front, but today he got out front really early. Yeah, Greaves had to start back in row number nine after his poor result yesterday when he pulled off early, so he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to get back up and contend with Brock Hager for this win here in round 10. Klaus still feeling the pressure from Rosales as they go down the back stretch, headed for Cemetery Turn here at Bark River. Klaus putting the loud pedal down now. He opened that gap up, then he pushed a little bit wide. We're gonna see if Rosales can dive underneath. He's able to make up that ground that he was losing. We'll see who gets the run as they head for the Cooper Tires flyaway. Rosales came out of the cemetery, turned like he was shot out of a cannon and takes that spot over from Klaus. Rosales now up into second place. As we come to that mandatory competition caution, the halfway point as they're racing to the flag, Rack, restack this whole field. There. Guys, this track is speeding up rapidly. Second, about over a second on each lap they go around. I was catching up with a Tom Lanaville just a few moments before opening ceremonies to ask him about the dirt. You know, of course, this track has sat idle for a year. How does that affect the dirt? He said, not really. After the last event, so even after this weekend, they seal off the track, they pack it down. That's going to preserve the dirt for the next event. So no major issues and no Real, it didn't really have much of an effect on the dirt here this weekend. Part two of Pro Stock side by side underway. Brock Hager, Jacob Rosales, Jesse Klaus will lead the field down into turn one. Top three cars going single file. Everybody else still stacked up two, three, four wide. As Look at Rosales. Sorry to cut you off, Shane. Rosales just dove to the inside of Brock Hager. Here comes CJ Greaves working his way up through the field. The turno got all out of shape, almost went over, but made the save. Lego is being shuffled back quickly here. That'll put Matt Wood up into fourth. Absolute chaos going on further back in the field. There's the 99 of Klaus as they head down towards Cemetery Turn. He's still running in third. 
Yeah, Klaus trying to run to the bottom side of the cemetery turn. There's a great shot once again. Two roller jumps and you head towards the Cooper Tire flyaway jump. Very, very high speed. You have to hit your marks. You get off course very, very easily there. Battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Still heating up a little bit. And I saw CJ Greaves coming into the picture. Time running out. Here comes CJ Greaves diving down to the inside of Matt Wood down through Cemetery Turn. Greaves looking for traction way over to the inside. He made it work. Just terrific right pass. That. Yeah, terrific pass there by Wood, or by Greaves on Wood to move up into fourth place. Now Greaves is going to be all over the back bumper of Jesse Klaus as they come up and over the Cooper Tires flyaway. Reeves trying to launch off the flyaway for his advantage. Trying to make another pass on the 99 of Klaus. Here comes Greaves to the inside. Klaus is moving down and trying to take that line away. Look at how close they are, bumping and banging off of one another. Now it's a drag race. It's going to be CJ Greaves taking that spot away as they come down into turn one. Yeah, great sportsmanship driving by both drivers, really just sticking to their lines, not cutting each other off. Yeah, Hager really starting to stretch his lead out now. He's been running in clean air for a while. Greaves going to the outside of Rosales in turn one. So much speed in that 33 car of CJ Greaves. Just made the pass on the outside. Well, the white flag's out this time by. There it is, Brock Hager. Yeah, an even better drive by Brock Hager. Just running away and hiding in that number 12. Well, a racing Yamaha, he's gonna do it. Takes the win, second will go to CJ Greaves. Salas will get third. And Klaus will round out your top four. The Amsoil Championship Off-Road on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Amsoil. Amsoil, run with us. Stock side by side underway here at Park River International here in round number 10. Jesse Klaus not wasting any time coming into turn number one. See if all these cars can get through clean, all 22. That's Klaus feeling the heat right now. With RJ Lego in the number 91, that's the battle for the lead. Those two started on the front row, the fastest four so far, just checking out over the rest of this field. Looks like Brock Hager, I was just gonna say it, it looks like he was coming in the bottom side, making two passes. In one turn, now he's gonna take the lead. Yeah, here comes Rosales now to the inside of Klaus. Gonna try to sneak away a spot. Runs out of grip there on the bottom. Klaus is moving down and trying to take that line away. Look how close they are, bumping and banging off of one another. Now it's a drag race. It's going to be CJ Greaves taking that spot away as they come down into turn one. And an even better drive by Brock Hanger. Just running away and hiding in that number 12. Well, the reason down the hall, he's going to do it. You know, it worked out good. I made some, some early passes right there on lap one, and it helped a ton getting out front early. and. Um, I'm pumped. This well racing Yamaha has been fast. Max Tire's been hooked up and um, ready to go. ATVs and UTVs are often driven to the edge and need extra engine protection. Amsoil allows riders to confidently push their machines to the limit. So this is the Amsoil oil change kit. It comes with the proper amount of oil. It comes with an oil filter, which you need to change. And it also comes with the o-ring for the oil filter and the little washers for the drain plugs. Easy and convenient. Amsoil ATV UTV oil change kits for most Can-Am and Polaris platforms. up round 10 pro four these guys are the showcase of off-road racing one driver i'm going to keep my eye on 
He's starting in fourth today. That's Doug Matang. He qualified very well here at Mark River. He's shown a lot of speed, but he's in a bit of a dry spell. It's been a while since he's been on the podium, and he is motivated. Another driver to watch is going to be Johnny Greaves. He starts on the pole, and he is fresh off picking up career Pro 4 win number 100 at Dirt City Motorplex. Pro 4 is underway. Johnny Greaves jumps out to the early race lead down into turn one, pitching the truck way sideways on this slick surface here with the water they put down. Yeah, the Pro 4s are definitely going to need an all-wheel drive because it is really wet. It's going to take a little bit to shake off this water. There's Dougie Matang just missing that K-Rail crossing back over in front of LeDuc. John Greaves now coming in the back, sweeper by cemetery turn, rotating that truck early. There's CJ Greaves, Doug Matang in the 81. Kyle LaDuke sitting back there in fourth, but we've seen him be patient, especially these last few rounds. He's really patient in the first half of the race, and then after that competition yellow, he turns it up. Yeah, he really paces himself. Yeah, look at Doug Matagi setting up to the inside. He put a brand new fresh power plant in that 81 coming in around 10. So we'll see if he can get the job done as the track already starting to brush off some of that moisture. Yeah, we'll see this track, this race line wear in really well as this race goes on. It's going to get faster and faster and faster for these pro fours. There's Doug Matag. Back on board with CJ Greaves, the Vision Wheel back, Monster Energy Toyota ride, trying to hunt down his father who just clinched his 100th career Pro 4 victory. So he's looking for 101 here, and both the Greaves trucks look really, really quick today. Yeah, a lot of speed out of the Greaves team right now. Doug Patek still holding strong in third place. Jay Greaves now slowly reeling in. Johnny Greaves, he did to be patient right now. He knows that the competition yellow is coming, although he's still trying to tighten that gap up. As they go through the right-hand sweeper. CJ Greaves looking for a line around Johnny Greaves. He's going to look to the inside into the gravel pit. Well, it looks like John Greaves kind of just went outside and said, here, CJ, you take that spot away. But he might have got that loose, loamy dirt. But CJ now opening up a pretty big gap. Yeah, Johnny Greaves is gone. I wonder if Johnny Greaves might have ducked into the hot pit there. That's going to put Matang up into second. And this next time by the finish line, it will be the competition yellow. So if Greaves may have had a tire going down, that's the perfect time to dive in to change it. But now we'll go down trackside for a report from Haley Shanley. This track is so demanding. Some might call it a crew chief's track. When you're going at the speeds and as hard as you go here at Bark River, you're not only putting your tires, but the power plant, your motor, brakes, and many other components to the test here. That is where preservation of these trucks really comes into play. We saw that be the case yesterday. Not as much today. We have many more trucks out here than we had seen just one round ago in round nine. One driver who has been bad fast this season. He has shown speed throughout, but has been plagued by mechanicals and tough luck. That's Doug Matag. The last time we had seen him on the podium was the opening rounds in Anago, Wisconsin. Now he has been up there. He was actually way up at the front there at the Forest County Potawatomi brush run at Crandon. Now back in another big track. He's looking very good out there. The green flag flies again. We'll see if CJ Greaves can hold off Doug Matang and Kyle Duke. And that's just interesting. I'm wondering how much Kyle Duke was holding back in that first half. He didn't seem to be the fastest truck. Well, we know he's been really patient in the early going of these Pro 4 races. There you see he puts the move on Matag, pushed him up the berm. Terrific pass by Kyle Ledoux. Oh, Matag Kyle Ledoux battle goes back. Wide. So Matag battles back to take that second place spot back from Kyle Ledoux. Oh, Kyle Ledoux, something broke on Ledoux. He came over that right-hander. Tough, tough break for Kyle Ledoux. He is definitely off the pace, and here's Andrew Carlson now coming into the cemetery turn. Carlson now up into third, Kyle Cheney up into the top four. And now we're down to a two-horse race here for this lead. It's CJ Greaves in the number 33 up and over the Cooper Tires flyaway with Doug Matag hot on his heels. Matag, he's got a shot at this. He just needs to put the laps together. There's plenty of time. 
Yeah, it's going to be tough to chase that man right there, CJ Grease. He's just been flat out flying a 118, 849 by the 33. And trying to keep it together with just under three laps to go in this one. CJ trying to make it a clean sweep here at Mark River International Raceway. He picked up his fourth win of the season yesterday in round nine, trying to make it five wins in ten rounds. Tag now still trying to hunt down Reeves. There's Doug Matang in that hostile wheel stronghold motorsports ride. Time is definitely starting to run out, Shane. We're looking. Reeves still laying down some good lap times, but Matag not going away quite yet. Matag still on the throttle trying to keep pace. Yeah, you got to give kudos to Doug Matag. He's trying everything. He's switching up his lines. He's doing stuff that CJ Greaves isn't doing. He's just trying everything. And Greaves just has not made a mistake yet. I was just going to say that. sailing this entire round 10 race. Yeah, I was just going to say, he's been flawless in this one. Definitely had to set up right. Very, very comfy in the truck. Those Max's tires really digging deep. The vision wheels holding up that tire. And Doug Matag right on the back of him, trying everything. Still CJ Greaves with about a seven or eight truck leg lead over Matag. They'll come past our starting line one final time. Down the hill, headed for turn one. No change to that interval. No, absolutely not. Greaves, look at he's smoking the tires on that blue groove in turn one. Greaves trying to hold it together one more time. Come through this little single section. Matang not giving up. He drives hard to the bottom, but there's not going to be enough time. The 33 of CJ Greaves looks like he's going to take round 10. Doug Matang across the line in second, matching his best finish for the season. And Andrew Carlson will come across the line in third. Johnny Greaves jumps out to the early race lead down into turn one, pitching the truck way sideways on this slick surface here with the water they put down. As we look at CJ Greaves once again, there's his father John and Doug Matang still within reaching distance of these two monster trucks. Yeah, but CJ slowly reeling in Johnny right now. He goes to the right hand sweeper, CJ Greaves looking for a line around Johnny Greaves. He's gonna look to the inside into the gravel pit. Well, it looks like John Reeves kind of just went outside and said, here, CJ, you take that spot away, but he might have gotten that little slopey dirt. But CJ now opening up a pretty big gap. Well, we know he's been really patient in the early going of these Pro 4 races. There you can see he puts the move on Matag, pushed him up the berm. Terrific pass by Kyle Ledoux. Oh, Matag's Matag going to battle back. Fight. So Matang battles back to take that second place spot back from Kyle Ledoux. Three, three of CJ Greaves looks like he's going to take round 10. Doug Matang across the line in second. But really just hats off to my crew, uh, all of these fans for hanging out here at Bark River. Uh, Dougie was giving me everything I had. And he, my spotter Devin just kept saying, he's, he's five back. Oh, you gained a couple. Oh, he gained them right back. So just keep doing what you're doing. Don't make any big mistakes. And uh, that's what it really came down to. So. Coming into Bark River, C.J. Greaves had a five-point lead over Kyle LaDuke. With his weekend sweep, that lead has ballooned to 25 points. Time is running out for Kyle LaDuke and the rest of this Pro 4 field. Andrew Carlson, Jimmy Henderson, Johnny Greaves, they have a lot of work to do to move up in the standings. What are you most excited about for the final rounds in Crandon? Crandon has the biggest crowds in short course off-road racing. We're going to decide our champions there. The stakes are never higher than the finale weekend. That's why I'm excited. For Haley Shanley and Shane Stetsney, I'm Brent Smith. Thanks for watching Amsoil Championship Off-Road. Good night, everyone.